I'm Scott, the publisher of Part-Time Audiophile. Today, we're going to tackle the age-old problem. What's better, digital or analog? Dun, dun, dun. This is uh, one of the first arguments I got um, handed to me when I first started doing audio stuff back 10, 11 years ago now. I, I started on the computer audio file uh, forum uh, arguing with web trolls about um, digital audio. And what is it about digital audio uh, that was uh, fully superior to anything analog? This was a very vibrant forum. There were uh, lots of very, very interesting and creative uh, exchanges of ideas. The uh, level of discourse was uh, remarkably high uh, in the sense that uh, we probably started with you're an idiot and descended to uh, monosyllabic uh, insults within one post. It was pretty, pretty remarkable, really. The challenge I think a lot of folks have is uh, this... Uh, how do I behave in public? All right, I, maybe it's it's as simple as that. But the, I think uh, there is there is a level below that where uh, you have uh, some theory versus some some reality, right? And and of course the desire need to be right. Um, analog is uh, at least according to some clearly inferior in the sense that it uh, has noise, it has uh, artifacts, it has a high noise floor, right? Um, lack of detail, lack of clarity, fill in the blanks, right? Um, digital on the other hand uh, is cold, it's analytical, it's edgy, it's not real life, it doesn't sound like actual music, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crap. Um, for lack of a better word, it is everything that real music is not. Okay, so we've staked our positions and we're, we're very clear now uh, on uh, where people are coming from. I think there's some really good uh, science that's been done, and I mean by science in the sense of actually looking at data, about uh, what the uh, sound quality uh, is uh, out of an analog versus a digital system. And, and it usually gets ignored that uh, these things are not monolithic, right? There are some digital systems uh, which are extremely refined, extremely analog sounding. In fact, if you're looking for uh, Michael Fremer's most common compliment to a digital system is it's something along the lines of it sounds very liquid, very organic, or very analog sounding. Um, this is... Uh, state of the art, right? It's, it, it's a moving target. Uh, 10 years ago, uh, we were debating whether or not asynchronous USB was a thing or should be a thing or if it matters, right? Today, we've gone significantly past that. Uh, and we have assumed, in fact, I think at this point, it's wildly assumed that you can get uh, at very least parity with an, uh, a, a very high quality analog source, uh, or maybe uh, higher than that. And I mean that in the sense that uh, analog systems are also not monolithic, right? You can get a very cheap turntable, uh, drop a, a fine needle on it, uh, do the whole thing for a couple hundred bucks and get a really nice sound out of it. And by nice, I mean something very listenable, something you're going to want to sit down and play. And you're also going to uh, get, you know, that kind of classic analog experience. You'll get some some pops and clicks. You will have the uh, the experience of playing with the, uh, the 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 tone arm and the needle. You'll have the uh, warmth maybe of, of the uh, sound, the, the quote unquote warmth. And this is what I think happens when you're talking about uh, uh, analog systems, right? You get these experiences and you can get different ones with, with, with digital. Which one is better? I... <laughs> Really? I have no idea. It, it's not a matter of whether or not one uh, philo philosophical approach is better than another. It has much more to do with how this particular approach under that 
philosophy has been implemented. Some of them uh, come off really, really well and, be, and can be really engaging. Uh, I've had some incredible experiences uh, in hi-fi as, as a whole that I would not have anticipated, right? If, if I tell you that my preferences, my biases, if you will, are for analog, uh, for small tube amplifiers and for dynamic, sorry, and I mean by that, a horn, loudspeakers, right? Uh, You'll, you'll kind of characterize me in one way. If I tell you that my, my preference is for um, real oh, ultimate transparency, uh, for, for a crystalline purity, for, for the ability to hear between the notes, you may put me in another category. And neither of those is right. Neither of those is wrong. It's just what I bring to the table. And I think that the analog digital divide can be uh, characterized in the same kind of way. Uh, is it implemented well or well enough to get me uh, engaged? And trivially, at least today, 2020, I believe it is uh, obviously true that uh, a good digital system can sound really, really engaging. And I think it's obviously true that a good analog system can sound really, really engaging. I don't know which one uh, is better uh, up front. You have to kind of put the whole thing together and experience the whole thing. So I, I like this, this argument. It's more of an argument in principle than an argument in fact. Uh, it, is, it is just taking a piss in, 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 uh, in other words. I, I don't know what, to, what gets people so excited about it, but it, it's, that's where I think we're going. A, uh, that said, so, so sound quality versus, uh, you know, measurements versus personal experience, putting all that aside, there is something else about uh, high-end audio and the digital analog divide that I think is worth kind of mentioning. It's way easier for a digital system to become music. So that is a system that plays digital music through a playlist, right? Uh, that you've curated yourself. And it's, it's wonderful. It's a very good experience. Or maybe you've gone and borrowed one from David Solomon or, or someone else. You found it on, on Tidal or Cobas or something like that. And you're now playing it. That's awesome, right? You can experience new music. But I believe there's also the, the tendency to lose track of things when you are uh, going through computer audio. It's uh, more likely for me specifically to uh, become distracted, to start multitasking, to want to do something else with my hands, with my, with my head, maybe even now with my body. I'm not necessarily only listening to the music. I'm uh, a little removed from it in a way that uh, I am not removed when I am listening to a, uh, an LP on a turntable. I have to get up and move to do that, right? I have to interact with that system. And so there's something uh, kind of mechanical, mechanical about the uh, analog system that's requiring me uh, to be part of the process. So it's difficult for me to maintain a level of concentration on an alternative, maybe parallel uh, task uh, when I'm listening to a record. Totally easy to do that on digital, but not on, not on analog. And I think that's actually interesting, right? There's something disruptive about analog audio that isn't the case with digital. And that may be uh, worthy of uh, acknowledgement in a way that maybe we should in fact be promoting it because there's something really odd about uh, inconvenience uh, and maybe even spiritually fulfilling about being inconvenienced by forcing you to focus, to, to narrow your experience to the experience, to be intentional and mindful and engaged. Maybe it isn't the uh, height of, of sonic purity. Maybe the noise floor isn't perfectly vanishing. Maybe it isn't as a uh, uh, simple or as uh, easy to use, but it is uh, something that I have to be a part of. I am now part of the uh, playback chain. That's interesting. 
Uh, on the other side, there's something about digital, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, I love mixtapes. It's kind of how I got into music and uh, uh, playback in the first place, you know, making mixtapes in the 80s on my little boombox, waiting for the song to come on the radio and hitting record just maybe two or three seconds too late and, and chopping that part off on, my, on the tape that I'm making. That, that, was, that, was, the, that was state of the art. It was fun. It was, it was actually really fun. Um, but it, it was also kind of a pain in the butt, right? Today's musical curation, the, the ability to create playlists, um, what's awesome about it is the sheer variety that I can get my hands on now. I mean, I've got maybe uh, a couple hundred, maybe a thousand LPs, um, a couple hundred. Um, and I've got, no, I don't know, 50, 60 analog tapes. Um, uh, and I mean by that, real, real, real tapes. And they're really awesome to use, but uh, I also have access to Kobuz or Tidal and, uh, and Spotify. And the, the number of uh, musical experiences available through those two, three channels is, uh, it's infinite compared to what I actually have in the house. That is so amazing. So I could, in one playlist, go from, you know, uh, classical Baroque, music to to uh, electronic dance music to uh you know uh, some kind of uh, uh mongol death metal played on traditional instruments to uh to uh speed uh with ska right or or something that's uh maybe maybe something from from the 1970s uh, uh um, disco phase i can do all that in one playlist not not that anyone should should do this this is this is not good practice, but you could, right? So you could have a thousand playlists to explore all of your interests and then still not get anywhere near the end of the line. So this is, this is where, I, where I'm at, right? On one hand, I have interactivity, this, this requirement to be present, this, this intentional experience where I am engaged with playback and another one where I've got infinite possibility at my fingertips. So the question I've got is why would you choose? If you had these two experiences in hand, why choose? Why not do both, right? Uh, I find that limiting myself in this way uh, arbitrarily and upfront to be uh, kind of self-defeating, it kind of removes the purpose of what this hobby is for me, which is variety and, and experience. I, I kind of want all of that. Uh, and I think that the uh, analog side and the digital side, they both bring different things to the, to the party. So yeah, I find this to be an artificial and kind of dumb argument, to be perfectly honest. I don't care which one's superior, uh, technically or emotionally. I want them both to be awesome and they can be. So I think this question is done, right? I don't really believe that there's any, any reason to have to choose. So why would you? Feel free to argue with me in the comments. Uh, I'd love to get what your feedback is, what your experience is, what your preferences are, and more importantly, why? Why do you love one or the other? What is it that you do love? Uh, let's start that conversation. Uh, take care.